With Valentine's Day just around the corner, I was inspired this week to paint a red rose. In this video, I'll show you a few different watercolour techniques and I'll talk to you about why I didn't follow the reference photo too closely. I've painted a lot of roses over the years because they are my most favourite flower to paint. but I've never painted a red rose, so this was a first for me. I took the reference photo myself. I've said in the past that I prefer the flowers I paint to be in the sun so that I get lots of beautiful cast shadows that I can paint. This one was taken outside, but it wasn't taken in direct sunlight, so I don't have those cast shadows to make the painting more interesting. I had to come up with another way to make my painting more interesting. I didn't want to paint the leaves. I wanted to keep it simple and focus on the rose. So to make it more interesting, I kept those outer petals lighter in colour and I tried to make them fade away into the background. I increased the contrast on the inner petals to try and bring those forward. I also varied the shades of red on the outer petals instead of painting them all one tonal value like they are on the reference photo. I used four Windsor & Newton colours, Windsor Red, Windsor Violet, Sap Green and Payne's Grey and I painted it on Arsh Coal Pressed Watercolour Board that is no longer available to buy unfortunately. I've got my Windsor Red here. I'm going to mix some water into it. This was the main colour that I used on the rose. I've wet the entire paper with water and now I'm going to paint this colour loosely over the rose. So that's really loose all over the rose. I haven't tried to keep it within my pencil lines. Now I'm going to lift the board up and let the paint run. And I'll tilt it up the other way as well and let it run down the other way too. I do come back at the end of the painting and I put some more paint onto the background. I'm just holding it upright and letting the paint drift down to the bottom corner of the paper. Okay, so that will do for now, but as I said, I do come back at the end of the painting and put some more paint on there. Once the background dried, I started to paint in all the outer petals around the perimeter of the rose. I wet each petal with water and I used the Windsor Red on them. I decided to keep these outer petals lighter in colour because I wanted them to fade away into the background. On this petal I also left a lost edge where I didn't put any paint. I'll do the same thing here on this one. I won't put any paint along that middle edge which will give me a lost edge there. The lost edges help to add some form to the rose they stop it from looking quite so flat and it will also create a bit of depth so the outer petals will look like they're further away than the inner petals. Here I've got nothing on my brush and I'm smoothing out the paint. I went all the way around the outside edge painting all those outer petals the same way. Then I started to paint the inner petals. I wet these with water as well and I used Windsor Red again. I painted them all in like this on the wet paper, one by one, jumping all over the place. It was like painting a jigsaw puzzle. Once all of the petals were washed in, I needed a shadow colour, so I thought I'd mix some Windsor Red with some Windsor Violet 
and I thought that would give me something close to what I was seeing on the reference photo. I've painted some masking fluid on the centre part of the rose just to preserve the lighter colour. I needed to get some darker colour on this petal here before I take that masking fluid off. So I'm wetting this one with water. Then I started to paint some more Windsor Red on this one. I started at the base of the petal near the centre of the rose because I want to keep the edge of this petal lighter in colour even though it's not much lighter on the reference photo. I felt that I needed to vary the tonal value of the petals to make my painting more interesting. Okay, I'm going to take the paint out of my brush and I'll use the brush to push some of that paint up towards the outer edge. Just breaking up that straight line that I had. That's better. Now I have to work quickly before the red dries. I pick up some of the plum and I paint that onto the red while it's wet. If my paint had started to dry, I would need to dry it off completely and then re-wet it with water before I put this colour on. But because it's still wet, I can go ahead and paint this over the top. I'm painting in that dark shadow area that I see on the reference photo. That's dry now, so I'm going to take off my masking fluid. Now I'll wet that section in the middle with some water and I'll pick up some Windsor Red. My brush is not super wet, it's fairly dry so that the paint doesn't spread too far. I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm barely touching the surface. That releases the paint. I want to try and leave some of the light colour showing. I don't want to completely cover it with this red. Just little random spots here and there. I want a tiny little squirt of permanent sap green. I'll load my brush up with a little bit of it. And then I do the same thing on here with the green. Just on this right hand side. There's a little green section I can see on the reference photo. Now I want some thicker red paint, so I'll wipe my brush up here where the pigment is. And then I come back here while it's still wet. I think it's still wet. Maybe it's not. I think I might need a bit more water on there. I dried it off and I painted some more water on there. Now I've got that thicker pigment again, so I wiped my brush where it's squirted out on the plate. And I'll paint that thicker paint over those more watery red marks that I made. It's still wet. I've got a bit of the plum colour that I mixed from Windsor Red and Windsor Violet. I paint that on to paint that shadow that I see. Moving out to this petal, I've painted some Windsor Red on it. The paper's wet. Now I've got some of the two colours mixed together. The Windsor Violet mixed with Windsor Red. There's a bit of a purpley mark on this petal. You can see it on the reference photo. That's what I'm painting in now. And the paper's wet. It's giving me those soft edges. Here I'm wetting this large petal with some water. I want to start to paint the shadow that I see on this one. I want to do it on the wet paper to keep my paint edges soft. 
I kept going around all those petals in the centre with the plum colour and some more Windsor Red as well. I'll use the two colours mixed together first. This is Windsor Red mixed with Windsor Violet. I paint that where I see that shadow. I've got some Payne's Grey here on my plate that I used on another painting so I'm going to make use of it now and darken up those shadows with it. I'll wet this shadow with some water. This is where I want to paint it down in here. I need to deepen the colour. At the moment the shadow is all one colour. So I extend the water further than where I'll be putting the paint. That'll keep the paint edges soft. I'll get some Payne's Grey and I'll put that right in here where it's the deepest and darkest colour that I can see on the reference photo. And now I've got Payne's Grey here to dab it in close to that other petal. Then I'll take the paint out of my brush and feather it out a bit. Nothing on my brush now. Just push it out a little bit so that it's not all concentrated in one area. It softens the edge. That's better. I went around and darkened some of those shadows with the Payne's Grey. Now what I want to do is darken the inner petals with another layer of Windsor Red. I want them to be darker and bolder than the outside petals like I said, which will hopefully bring them forward and the lighter petals around the outside will fade back into the background. So all my petals are dry. I've got some Windsor Red here and I'm washing that over the petals in the middle. I'm using my large number 7 brush so that I can get it on there fairly quickly. So I'm painting on dry paper with watery Windsor Red. I watered the paint down to make sure it was transparent. I didn't want to cover up all the work that I've already done. So I needed the paint to be transparent. By making it transparent, I may need to give the petals two layers of paint in order to boost the colour, but I'll see what it looks like after it's dry. So I'll glaze this over these inner petals. I'll dry it off and I'll stand back and see what it looks like. I dried mine off, had a look at it and felt that it needed a second layer of the paint over the top. So I repeated the process a second time. I've just wet this one with water and I'm going to put a bit more red around the edge where it touches the other petals. I felt it needed it because I darkened the centre so much and it was too light in comparison. So I'm just going to let that paint bleed on the wet paper. I don't think I need to fuss with that. I looked at my background and felt that it wasn't bright enough. It looked too wishy-washy. So I wet the background with water. Now I'm painting some more Windsor Red over the top. I'm going to do what I did at the start. I'll put the paint on. And then I'll lift my paper off the table and let the paint drift down into the corner. So here I'm painting carefully around the petals with the red. Okay, I think I've got enough paint there. I can lift my paper up and let that paint bleed down over the water. I'm angling it towards the bottom right corner. Might put a touch more paint. 
make it drift a bit more. Okay, I'll tilt that to the bottom right corner again. I like to play around with my backgrounds and have a bit of fun with them. I did the same thing on the top side of the painting. I turned the paper upside down and put the paint on and then tilted it to the top left corner. After that I let it dry. I was happy with it so I took my washi tape off the edges. And there it is finished. So I used the reference photo as a guide only. I didn't follow it precisely because I knew that I needed to make some changes in order to make the painting work. I have made a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site. I'll be publishing it next week. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and click the subscribe button because I'll be back next week with another watercolour tutorial filled with hints and tips to get you painting like a pro in no time. I'll see you then. I didn't follow it precisely because I knew that I needed to change a few things to try and make the painting work. I have made a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon, looking at myself, yep, sorry. Thank you for watching, please give this video a like and click on the subscribe button because my hair is falling in my eyes, yep, and I'll be back next week. I have made a full length tutorial of this painting and I've put it on my, no I haven't, going to put it on next week. I have made a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site. I have made a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site. I think it's about an hour and 20 minutes long or so. Why am I talking so softly? I think, I think it's about an hour and 20 minutes long or so. I'm cat sitting. Hey buddy, what you doing? Being a good boyfriend then?